Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Ramesh Dagubati. I'm the Vice Chair and a Professor of Cardiology at West Virginia University in the United States of America. It's my great pleasure because I'm with uh, Alan Kribier, whom I consider as the founder of uh, Structural Interventional Cardiology. And, uh, you know, it's great uh, to have you here, Alan. And, uh, you know, we are very privileged uh, for offering this interview with us. Hello, it's my pleasure to be here with you. I can tell you, I love to come to India and especially in Calcutta and uh, being interviewed by, we, by you is a privilege. Thank you, thank you. You know, everything started um, in 85 when I did the first balneotic valvoplasty. Actually, there was a life before Tevi, you know, and uh, it was balneotic valvoplasty for the treatment, the non-surgical uh, treatment of um, uh, degenerative aortic stenosis for all the patients who were declined for valve uh, surgery, for, for uh, valve replacement, surgical valve replacement. Because at that time, you know, in 85, uh, we had more than 50% of the patients turned down by the surgeons because only their age, you know, above 70 was a limit that the surgeon didn't like to go through and uh, also because of some other contraindications. So I was fascinated by the number of patients dying of the disease in the Department of Cardiology where I was working. You know, because they had been turned down for surgical valve replacement, they had, they had symptoms of aortic stenosis. And we know that the mortality rate is extremely high if, uh, when the symptoms appear, if the valve is not replaced. So I'm very much concerned by that. So I developed balloon aortic valve replacement against the uh, opinion of my boss at that time. You know, he said, you will kill the patient on the table. You know, we cannot inflate a balloon across, across the valve. And uh, I did the first case, and uh, I was very amazed of the um, disappearance of all the symptoms. You know, the, 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 the patients uh, returned to normal life. She was extremely symptomatic, the first patient. So I, I called uh, some other patients who had been declined for valve surgery, and uh, uh, we did the first series of balloon aortic valve replacement published in The Lancet with the same kind of uh, unbelievable results. You know, the patients were improving very, very much immediately after the procedure. And uh, so uh, I was uh, really discouraged. But during these five years, I developed the mitral commissural tome, which was another innovation for the treatment of mitral stenosis, very much appreciated in, and used in India. So this is another story. So then, you know, in, um, in uh, 97, uh, by chance, I was in a meeting in Paris and I met um, uh, two engineers, Stan Rabinovich and Stan Rowe, and uh, so I uh, presented my project and uh, I, I thought that they would say, you know, you are crazy, but they didn't say that. They said, well, maybe there is something to do with this idea. And so they spoke to Martin Leon in the uh, United States. And Martin Leon also said, uh, well, uh, if it worked, you know, we have a huge market, you know, of patients, you know, benefiting of, uh, of the standard valve. And uh, so we created a startup and we created percutaneous valve technology. We started to do um, an in vivo uh, study uh, in, the, in Paris with my colleague, Ellen and Shaninoff. Uh, who had been my right arm, you know, he was today a uh, director of the uh, uh, Department of Cardiology after me. Uh, it's, she's a wonderful woman. And so we implanted this uh, prototype made by uh, the, the company and uh, in the ship model. And we implanted more than uh, 100 animals, you know, at different cardiac sites, you know. And, uh, and uh, to make it short, you know, we, uh, the, the main interest of this uh, animal experiment was first to, to, to refine all the aspect, technical aspect of uh, TAVI as it is done today, you know, the crimper, the, the attachment of the valve in the leaflet, the treatment before, after and so on. And also we demonstrated that the valve was unchanged after five months. And so this was absolutely crucial. You know, there was no change in hemodynamics and there, was no, there were no changes in uh, anatomic and uh, histologic uh, findings on the, van, on the leaflets. So this was very important and we are almost ready after one year and a half, you know, to, uh, to, to start in human, but we didn't know exactly when it would be. And uh, suddenly, you know, uh, one day, uh, we received uh, in my department in uh, Rouen, in the Department of Cardiology, a patient coming from north of France. He was only 57 years of age and uh, he had uh, multiple comorbidities. Uh, he was in cardiogenic shock. He, uh, he had an ejection fraction of 12 percent. Uh, he had a floating thrombus in the left ventricle and uh, he had an occlusion of the femoral arteries. You know, so uh, this was uh, 
the picture, you know, the, the worst patient that you can imagine and 57 years of age. So he came not for Val, because, for, for Terry, because it did not exist, but he came for balloon aortic valvoplasty using the transeptal approach because uh, I had a lot of experience with the transeptal approach and uh, for doing mitral conchiotomy and so on. And uh, we had been doing many cases of balloon aortic valvoplasty uh, Conceptually. So we, uh, we did that, you know, on the, on the hours following his admission at the hospital. And uh, well, the valve was dilated, you know, with a moderately good results because I could, not, uh, I could not continue the procedure because he had several episodes of cardiac arrest during it. You know. So I stopped and uh, three days later he, the, he was dying. He was absolutely dying. So uh, there were was, there was two possibilities. You know. We accept that he dies or uh, we try to implant a valve for the first time on this dying patient. You know, so I, 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 I got a, connect, uh, a, phone with, uh, a phone call with uh, Martin Leon, who was in the United States. I explained the situation, you know, and he said, you're crazy, you know, you cannot uh, do the first patients on a dying patients like this. So, uh, but fi finally, you know, after a lot of exchange of mails, uh, he said, well, okay, you can make it uh, uh, for ethical reasons, you know, because if he's 57 year old. So I went to the patient, explained the situation, and the patients wanted to have something done. The family was okay. So we put him on the table and uh, we did this uh, transeptal uh, uh, Tevi case, you know, where each step had to be improvised, you know, because I didn't know whether the valve will cross the septum, so I, the interatrial septum, so I dilated the septum with a one centimeter balloon, and uh, finally the valve could go through. Uh, there was a thrombus in the LV, you know, so I, I turned around, you know, and uh, I was really frightened of detaching him and having a cerebral embolization, but nothing happened. And finally I could bring the valve to the uh, inside the, the calcific deposit that I could see on the screen. I used the uh, opportunity of a cardiac sand seal because he, had, uh, he, he was arresting oh. <laughs> you know, uh, to deliver the valve. Yeah. And immediately after the valve was delivered, you know, the hemodynamic started again to work and uh, there was no gradient. The, the, the aortic pressure was uh, back to normal. It, when he was in, uh, he was in shock. You know, when I started, you know, the pressure was uh, more than 10, uh, 100 millimeter of mercury. The patient was smiling. He was doing very well, and uh, you know, I, I had the, the feeling that it was a kind of miracle. You know, because uh, the patient was surviving with the valve, which was working, no gradient, and uh, two two hours later. Uh, I, we brought the patient in his room and uh, we, drank, we drank a bottle of champagne with him, with yeah. him, you know. And, uh, and uh, in my uh, lectures, you know, in general, I show some pictures of him, you know, and it's absolutely unbelievable. The guy resuscitated, you know, the colors came back to his face. He was absolutely saved. Uh, two days later, he was able to answer the question of a journalist for the whole day, you know, he was uh, uh, eating normally and so on. And it was absolutely unbelievable. So I was very lucky, you know, because uh, this was not expected at all. You know.